All right, you guys ready? Class. Yes. Now, for all those people following along and paying attention, okay, if you have your phone out, you're using your NumWorks calculator, right? NumWorks, that what you were on? The NumWorks calculator? Oh, yeah, that's what it was, right? So the NumWorks calculator, we were using this on last Friday. So if you want to use it on your phone or if you want to use it on your computer, so be it. But, you know, I will call you out when I see you having Tinder on your phone. Listen, oh, okay, you're not an ugly man. Okay, why do you need an app to actually, you know, help help get a date? That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay. Seriously. Okay. I understand hobby, maybe, but, you know, you don't know. All right, so is your earbuds in? And, you know, all that other stuff is out, right? Yeah, we, we don't have that problem. Okay, so everyone's using the numworks. Functions. Graph the function f of x is 2x, g of x is 2x plus 4. In the same rectangular coordinate system, select integers from negative 2 to 2, inclusive. So we're going to go and do the numworks, and I'm going to start it from the bottom. Yep. Okay, here we go. All right, step by step, because we're going to graph two equations at the same time. I'm going to start off with grapher, because I want to graph. Arrow over, hit OK. Yes? So my function that I have is going to be add element, OK, and I'm going to just do empty. Or actually, which one do we have? Do we have an f of x, or is it... Yeah, this is a f of x. So let's just go down. Let's let's use it since we have it. We have an f of x, so why not use it? Okay, I'm going to use the f of x is going to be equal to 2x. So let's go ahead and add 2. And right here is an x. It's right below the power button on the screen, right in the middle. Those are my x's. So I have 2x. I'm going to hit OK. And do I want a second line? Yes, I do. So let's go down and add another element. And it's another function. Ooh, it even changed it for me. So now this one's now g of x. So I could distinguish which one's which. And now this one's going to be 2x, was it plus 4? Uh, yeah, because I'm not sure. I don't have the notes in front of me. Plus four. Plus four. Very good. All right. There we go. So hit OK. Now, what do you think I should do now? Let's go plot graph. Plot graph. That's a good good way to start. Okay. We could plot graph. And what else could we have done? We could display values, can't we? Okay. That's like doing the table. So let's... I believe the question itself is asking for us to fill this in, right? So let's go ahead and do that. Let's go straight to display values. Okay. What was that one little thing that we changed last time so we could actually have all the numbers I wanted? Anyone recall from Friday? Set the interval, right? So arrow up. And let's set the interval. And if I was paying attention, it says select integers from negative 2 to 2, inclusive. Integers, so that means it's going to be all my numbers, positive and negative, in between negative 2 and 2. So I want negative 2. And this one's going to go to 2. Confirm. Hey, look, there we go. So we have an f of x function and a g of x function. Let me go this side. There we go. All right. And now, for the purposes of trying to see everything here, I made it a little bit smaller, but you guys don't need to do that. But for the people watching the video, hopefully this will help. So 
I'm missing a value here. So on my table, I should have, I have the F and I need the G. So it's missing a G. So let's go ahead and call the F the red one, because why not? Because it's red over here. So this is my F of X. So when X is negative two, my F of X is negative four. Negative four. Just plug that in. So when F is negative one, negative two. So we can just go in and start plugging in everything. Zero, two, and four. And now for the next one, I'm gonna change this up. So I'm gonna do blue because why not? I want this to be the same. And now I'm gonna make this one bigger because otherwise I can't fit it on the thingy. Now I'm gonna do a G of X. You guys actually have more room on your graph than I do. So you actually have like extra lines and stuff to fill this in. So for my G of X, help me fill these out. So my G of X, so G of negative two gave me what? What is it? G of negative two? What was it? What? Zero? You was zero? Okay. Now, G of negative one? G of zero? G of one? G of two? There it is. Just those G functions that I had there. Does that make sense or nonsense? I'm hoping it makes sense. There's going to be a test over this later. <laughs> I know, got to post for pictures, right? Got to stand by my work. All right, are we good? Okay. So we went through, filled in the tables because that's what it was asking for. Okay, there's my solution, graphing the functions. Now, let's take a look and graph. If we were to graph the pot, the plots, it comes up something like this. So I'm gonna go back to my calculator. Now, instead of doing, instead of doing the table, we could arrow up and go select graph. So if you notice, it looks kind of different because it did an auto. So it makes it look, you know, in different intervals than what the graph is on the notes. But what is a special word that we could say about those two lines? They're what? Very good. They're parallel. Parallel lines. They are parallel lines. Parallel lines have the same slope, but a different y-intercept. Same slope, different y-intercept. So that should be the easiest thing. So if I'm looking at two equations and the number in front of my x are both the same, that's going to tell me, oh, hey, those ones should be parallel. Should be, right? So that's what we have there. So they are parallel lines. They're parallel lines. For all those people following along and listening and not talking to whoever that is because their earbuds are wet because they didn't hear me when I said that earlier. Parallel lines. Good job. Vertical line test for functions. If any vertical line intersects a graph more than once, the graph does not define y as a function of x. Does that make sense? Probably not, right? Now, let's take a look here. A vertical line is a line that it goes straight up and down. Straight up and down. Can I draw a line anywhere on A and it would cross the blue line more than once? Say yes. So, 
on that test right there, we could say that that is not a function. The vertical line test is testing for a failure. So this one is not a function. Now let's look at B. Is there anywhere on B I could draw a straight line up and down and it would cross the blue line more than once? No. So I see that this one is a function. What about C? Can I draw a straight line up and down and it would cross my blue line more than once. Nope. So this one also is a function. D. If I draw a line anywhere on the right side, because I have to go through my blue line. Some people actually get this confused. They're like, oh, but wait. If I draw a line over here, does it cross? No, it has to at least cross once. But we're testing it to see if it crosses twice. So if you try to draw a line here, that doesn't work because it has to be on the blue line. So it's going to be here. And so since it's right there, we would say this one is not a function. You have to write it out like that too. There we go. Not a function. Does that make sense? Questions, complaints, conspiracy theories. No? That's not a conspiracy theory. We already know that they're real. Okay? Yes. The government even came out and said, uh, so, sorry, uh, ignore the fact that we're wasting all your money. Here's, look, aliens are real now. There you go. Same thing we just got done saying, okay? Those are the bees. It says that taxation is theft. Now, example eight, analyzing the graph of a function. The given graph illustrates the body temperature from 8 a.m. through 3 p.m. Let X be the number of hours after 8 a.m. And Y be the body temperature at time X. What is the temperature at 8 a.m.? So, 8 a.m. So, go find 8 a.m. Isn't that where we're starting at? Say yes. 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 So, that's going to be my first value, isn't it? And so, what is our temperature at 8 a.m.? Right there. Which is? 101, right? So, this answer is? Is that Fahrenheit or Celsius? Fahrenheit, if you had a 101 temperature Celsius, why? What happens at 100 degrees Celsius? Nope, try again. What happens? What happens at 100 degrees Celsius? Nope, not freezing. Doesn't it boil? Water boils at 100 degrees Celsius. That's, yeah, so you don't want to have a 100 degrees Celsius temperature. I don't know. So, yeah. So, I know your brain actually dies at 107 or 106 degrees Fahrenheit. And so, if you think about it, so... Hmm. Water boils at 212 degrees Fahrenheit, and that's double of what you would already die from. So, I don't know, maybe like burst in flames, like every time we'd like put holy water on hobby. So yeah, it, it'd be just like that. Anyway, during which period of time is your temperature decreasing? When is it decreasing? Give me the X values. What does the word decreasing mean? Going down. going down. When is the temperature going down? Between what? Between zero and three. 
But what do those actually represent? Zero, we said, represented what time? 8 a.m., right? So if that represents 8 a.m., you would say that between what time periods? Between 8 and? Because it goes 8, 9, 10, 11. Between 8 and 11 a.m. Like that. Hopefully, that uh, does make sense, right? Nonsense? That too, if it needs to. Estimate your minimum temperature during the time period shown. Minimum. What, is, what does minimum mean? Smallest amount, right? The smallest amount. What is the smallest amount? Estimate your minimum temperature during the time period shown. Okay. So what do you think the minimum temperature is going to be? Eight? The temperature. What is the temperature? Temperature is on which side? There we go. Temperature is on the left side, right? That's good. So temperatures are on the left side. So we're looking, okay, the lowest thing on my graph is right about here, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so now what we're going to do is, if that's the lowest point, estimate what you think that is. 98.6? That would be a good thing. So on average, most people are actually not all the time 98.6, usually higher than that. How many hours after 8 a.m. does this occur? Now, how many hours after you wake up does this occur? Three hours. Very good. So it's three hours after you wake up. Okay. At what time did this occur? At what time this, did this occur? This one's at... 11, because we started at 8, right? So we woke up at 8, 9, 10, 11. So at 11 a.m., that is going to be when our temperature is the lowest, the minimum temperature. Anyone's questions, concerns, complaints, conspiracy theories? There we go. During which period of time is your temperature increasing? Ooh, increasing. When is it increasing? Uh, from, from 3 to 11 to so we switch it? So, let me switch it. Wait, no, 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 it doesn't from 11, which was right here, right? Yeah. To okay. To 2. 11, 1, 2. There we go. E, part of the graph is shown as a horizontal line segment. The horizontal line segment is right here. That's what that means. What does this mean about your temperature and what, when does this occur? What does it mean right here, this horizontal line? It stays there. It stays at the same, at the same thing. Very good. So my temperature stays the same. So we would say... Okay, temperature stays, what's that, 100? Okay. Uh, when does this occur? At 2 p.m., right? Okay. F, it says explain why the graph defines y as a function of x. Eh, it's kind of lame. Yeah, don't worry about that part. It's not on the test. I don't like that question, so I'm just going to skip it. Yeah, it's kind of lame. Did I go back? No. Why is this out of order? D, E, F. Oh, yeah, my slides are out of order. That's why. Okay, sorry. Kind of slow this morning. I'm still on my first pot of coffee. All right. The minimum temperature can be found by locating the lowest point of the graph 
point. Oh, wait, this is just all the answers for the last one. Dang it, I gave you all the answers. We weren't supposed to do that. I was supposed to make you do it. Anyway. Right, right. I... <laughs> what? Anyway. Okay, now this is what's going to happen. Okay, we finished the notes, didn't we? Yes. Now, what page do these notes go in your notebook? 11. And so on page 10, you're going to put your homework. So you're going to write down your homework problems. So the remainder of this class, which is good like 20 minutes or more, you're going to get this homework done so you don't have to worry about it anymore. Okay? So get the homework done. Write down the problems. Okay? Make sure you are taping these in. Do not be that slacker that does not tape in anything. I have a roll of tape right here, and the other roll of tape is, I don't know. Make sure you all like, share, and subscribe. Hit that notification button. Support my channel.